for graphing functions using calculus, and we have f of x is equal to x squared times e to the negative x. So first thing we want to look at is, do we have any trouble spots? Are there any values that we have to exclude from our domain? If I rewrite this function, I notice that I can rewrite it to have a ne that negative exponent to be positive, bringing it down to the denominator. So I could technically rewrite this as f of x equals x squared all over e to the x. So I know this, but I'm not sure if you know this, but there's no value when e to the x is equal to zero, but we can solve, try to solve it. So we would have to be worried if there was any value that set e to the x equal to zero. We could take the natural log of both sides, but this is where we're gonna have a problem. If you try to take the natural log of zero, it's impossible. You'll get an error on your calculator. So there's no value of x which sets this denominator equal to zero, and so we don't have to worry about it. So our domain is all real numbers. So next thing we wanna do is find out where this function is increasing and decreasing. Well, we can use the product rule or we can use the quotient rule. I prefer the product rule. So let's use the product rule to take the derivative of this at prime of x. So product rule, derivative of the first. So derivative of x squared, which is two x times the second e to the negative x plus the first, which was x squared, times the derivative of the second. So recall derivative of e was e itself, e to the negative x, times the derivative of the exponent, which is negative one. So let's rewrite this a little bit. f prime of x is equal to 2x e to the negative x minus x squared e to the negative x. We need to find out where this derivative is equal to zero and if it's ever undefined. So setting this equal to zero, I noticed that it would be easier for me if I can factor some, some stuff out. And notice that we have a single x that is in common. And we have this e to the negative x in common in both terms. So let's pull out one x and let's pull out e to the negative x from both of those groupings. And you would be left with just a two here minus, I pulled one of the x's out of the x squared and the e to the negative x, so minus x. And we're looking at when is this equal to zero? So we're looking at when is x equal to zero? When is e to the negative x equals zero? And when is two minus x equals zero? Okay, so that first one just fell out, e to the negative x, this never equals zero. We were just looking at that before. And two minus x is equal to zero when x is two. So we have two critical numbers. x equals zero and x equals two. So we wanna test on each side of those critical numbers to see if the function is increasing or decreasing. Again, we're really only worried about positive or negative numbers. So when we're looking at the derivative here, maybe looking at it in factored form will help us. Is that number gonna be positive or negative? So let's rewrite it in the factored form, so x, e to the negative x times two minus x. So if you choose a number that is less than zero, so how about x equals negative one, and we plug it into that first derivative, well, first term x, that's gonna be negative. e to the negative x, so this is really e to the first power, that's 2.718, so that's positive. Plugging a negative one for x into two minus x, 
Well, that's two minus a negative, so that's positive. So plugging a negative one into the first derivative, you find that that's a negative number. So that tells me it's decreasing going down from left to right. Choose number between zero and two. So how about x equals one? Plug it into the first derivative. And again, we're only worried, is this gonna be a positive or a negative number? So plugging in one for x, that's positive. E to the negative one power, that's just one over 2.718 or one over E, that's positive. And two minus one, that's also positive. So multiplying three positives together is positive, And so this is increasing. So I can tell that we have a min at x equals zero. Let's also look at what's happening on the other side of two. So let's look at x equals three, plug it into the first derivative. Plugging in three for x, that's positive. E to the negative three is positive. And two minus three, that's negative. So this is less than zero. So this will be decreasing. So I can see we have a max occurring at x equals two. So if we wanna look at the min, we have to plug it back into the original. So let's just find that point. So we have a min when x equals zero, plugging it back into the original, we get zero squared, which is zero times e to the zero. So this is equal to zero. So we have a min when x is zero of zero. So we have a min at the point zero, zero. So let's look at our max. So something that's increasing and then decreasing, we have a max. A max occurs when x is two. So looking at f of two, we have two squared, that's four, and e raised to the negative two. So I'm gonna have to graph this, so that doesn't make much sense to me as about where to plot that. So four times plugging in the calculator and getting an estimate, e raised to the negative two power. That gives you about 0.54. or half. So we have a max when x is two and y is about a half. Okay, so maybe we can plot those points and then we're gonna need to take the second derivative. Let's plot those points. So at zero, zero, it's a min. And then at two, I'm gonna put, make this as big too. So at two, 0 0.5, we have a point. We can look at increasing, decreasing if we wanted. It's decreasing until we hit zero. It's increasing until we hit this two and one half, and then it's decreasing. But we wanna find out the concavity. So we need to use, we need to find the second derivative. Um, I don't know if we wanna leave it in factored form or we're gonna, I probably would leave it in this form. So f prime of x. And we'd have to use the product rule multiple times. So I maybe treat two X as one product and E to the negative X as a product. And then we have minus, we have an X squared. So I would treat that as one product and we have E to the negative X.
I guess if we pull out at e the negative x, we would only have to use the product rule once versus un, instead of both terms. Let's do that. So let's pull out. I don't want to pull out the x piece because that makes a product of three in here. And I don't want that. But if we pull out the e to the negative x, and that would just be multiplied by, we'd have a 2x for the first piece minus an x squared. Okay, so let's now take the second derivative. Using the product rule, we have the derivative of the first, derivative of e to the negative x. So derivative of the exponent is negative one times itself e to the negative x times the second, 2x minus x squared plus the first e to the negative x times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of the second is that 2x minus x squared. So derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of x squared is negative 2x. So we want to find when this is equal to 0. So I would probably pull out an e to the negative x. If we do that, you're left with this. Um, do you want to pull out a negative? Let's pull out a negative e to the negative x. Then we don't have to worry about distributing that negative. I guess we're going to have to distribute it anyway. OK, let's pull out positive. But so be careful, we need to distribute this negative one. So that would be a minus two x left plus an x squared. If I pulled out an e to the negative x from this piece, it's positive in front. All we're left with is this plus two minus two x. So let's combine like terms. So we have e to the negative x all times x squared minus 4x plus 2. You want to know when is this equal to 0 and when is it undefined? Well, it's defined everywhere. I notice that I can't factor it. There's nothing that multiplies to 2 and adds to negative 4. I could test to see the discriminant. Remember the discriminant? That's just what's underneath the radical when you're using the, the um, quadratic formula. And the discriminant would tell us what type of solution. Because I'm worried, do I have a real solution? Or if not, I don't have to go and solve for this when this is 0. So this would be 16 minus 4 times a. So that's minus. Um, minus eight. So it does have a real solution. So let's, we got to find it now. Okay, so e to the negative x, this never equals zero. So we don't have to worry about this. We're looking at when is x squared minus four x plus two equal to zero. We need to use the quadratic formula. So negative b, negative of negative four is four plus or minus the square root of negative four quantity squared is 16 minus four times a, so that's negative four times two, which is, is uh, minus eight all over two. So we have four plus or minus the square root of eight all over two. Well, square root of eight, that is the square root of four times two. So we can pull out a piece underneath the radical. So this is four plus or minus square root of four is two. So two root two all over two. We can pull a two out of the numerator. So if I pull a two out of the four, I'm left with a two plus or minus pulling a two out of two root two, I'm left with root two all over two. Okay, so we have two critical numbers or possible inflection points, and that is at x equals 2 plus root 2 and x equals 2 minus root 2. 
So I would figure out what those values were about. So about 3.4. And two minus root two is about 0 0.59 or 0 0.6. That just helps me plugging that in the number line numbers I need to check. So I need to look at something to the left is 0 0.6, something in between 0 0.6 and 3.4, and something to the right. You're plugging it into the second derivative. We're trying to find concavity. So looking at f double prime, let's look at when x is zero. So we get e to the zero, that is one, all times two. So that gives me back two, which is a positive number. So that means it's concave up. Choose a number between 0 0.6 and 3.4. So how about x equals one, plug it in the second derivative. E to the negative one is positive. And if I plug in one in here, I get one squared minus four, that's negative. Um, so negative times a positive is negative. This is less than zero, it's concave down. And then 3.4, something bigger than that. So how about x equals four? Plugging in the second derivative, e to the negative four, that's positive. Four squared, is that 16 minus four times four, which is 16. That cancels plus two, so that's positive. This is greater than zero, so it's concave up. We need to figure out, unfortunately, what those values is in the original function to figure out, because we have inflection points about at 0 0.6 and 3.4. Okay. So I need to pull the original. So we have this f of x is this x squared e to the negative x and our concavity we just found. And this is where we found it was increasing, decreasing. Sorry. Okay, so we, let's put it together. We're graphing. This is what we have so far. And we want to plug this back into the original, this two plus um, root two, to see what value we would get our inflection point now is at. So, when x is this, and I guess we could just do an estimate, what is f of 3.4? So this is 3.4 quantity squared, e raised to the negative 3.4. So 3.4 quantity squared times e to the negative 3.4.
That's about 0 0.4. So right here, 3.4 comma 0 0.4 is a inflection point. So let's just wrap this. This was at two, this is three, this is four, at 3.4, 0 0.4. So about right here is an inflection point. So I'm gonna put an X on the inflection point pieces. And then F of plugging in the 0 0.6, So 0 0.6 quantity squared e to the 0 0.6. So that gives us about 0.7. So 0 0.6. 0.7. So 0 0.6, 0 0.7. This is where I see I have an error. I have to have it. It's increasing there. So this is where I'm seeing I might have an error. Let me pause for a second. Okay, so I forgot to put this negative in here when I plugged it into my original function. So that changes, and this number is now 0 0.2. I knew this could not be above my max point when something was increasing. So I knew something was, that's how I knew something was off. So about 0 0.6, this is one. So about 0 0.6, 0 0.2. So I'm just going to estimate. That's right here. Okay, so we can start putting it together. We know it's concave up and decreasing until we get to 0 0.6 right here. No, wait a minute. We have it concave up, decreasing until we get to zero. Still concave up, and this is now where it's changing direction to concave down till we hit this 3.4 right here. So we have this piece like in here. And then it was concave up. That but it's still decreasing here, right? So it's gonna change so that it levels out and looks like this, but I'm not sure if it's crossing the x-axis or not, or if we actually have an asymptote. So we could look at our end behaviors of our graph. Did that tell us anything? I believe that's going to be um, hitting zero, but let's let's look at it. Okay, so this is what it looks like on Desmos. So this is what we have gotten. We got a min at zero zero. We got a max over here at the two, and a little over a half. But we and we have a horizontal asymptote. So let's go back and just talk about that really quickly. If I looked at this limit here, as I went to positive infinity, this would give me of x squared all over e to the x. e to the x function is gonna grow faster than the x squared function is when you are going to infinity. So the number in the denominator is getting larger a lot faster, and so this goes to zero. If you looked at this as a limit of x goes to negative infinity, 
Well, when we put in the negative here with this X in here, negative X, that's gonna be a positive. So that would give us, um, let me just do that real quick. That would give me an infinity, infinity squared times an infinity. And if they're both positive, so that goes to infinity, which our graph was doing. So only thing that was off in here was and I'd have to look and find if there was any x-intercept. Well, we do know it's touching at x equals zero, but does it cross or touch any place else? And that would be looking at this original, when is this equal to zero? And this original is only equal to zero when x is zero. And so it wouldn't actually cross, I should have looked at that before I started graphing, it wouldn't have crossed this x-axis over here. So we got the piece and we got to graph that using calculus, finding increasing, decreasing, max, mens, concavity, and then putting it all together.